Hello and welcome to this special edition of Market Masters. I have with me today Rajiv Jain, Chairman and Chief Investment Officer of the asset management firm GQG Partners. Although Rajiv has enjoyed a storied career with market-beating returns for a long period of time, he really attained celebrity status here in India when he boldly bought into the Adani Group companies last year. This was at a time when the group was going through tough times. That bet, by the way, has already paid off spectacularly well. With assets under management of nearly $130 billion globally, 22 of which are in India, GQG is a force to reckon with and is also one of the largest investors here in the country. Welcome to the show, Rajiv. It's a pleasure having you with us here. Is the, thanks, thanks for having me, Prashant. Uh, Rajiv is an investor who sort of, you know, looks at markets across the globe and invests across the globe. How does India compare to other large developing markets, especially those where there is a good mix of public companies and private companies represented in the stock markets? Yeah, Prashant, as you know, um, uh, there are a few very large uh, emerging markets, uh, and India is one of them. Uh, there, was, there has been too much focus on China, in our opinion, over the last uh, seven, eight years, and that's beginning to diminish. So I think I think if you look at the larger markets, Indonesia, India, Brazil, Mexico, and so on and so forth, India, I feel, is one of the best earnings growth stories. So if you leave aside everything, simply look at corporate earnings growth over the last five years, which is basically pre-COVID till today, India has seen one of the best earnings growth amongst all emerging markets um, as such, right? So far better than Chinese corporate earnings have actually declined, uh, which I, th I feel this doesn't get enough airtime that the, at the end of the day, earnings drive uh, markets. And uh, when corporate earnings are as strong as it has been, uh, generally the market will follow. And India, Brazil, Indonesia have been some of the best, but India has actually been remarkably strong corporate earnings growth. Do you think we are pricing a lot of that good earnings growth, Rajiv? Well, that's that's a million dollar question, as they say. Uh, I'm not so sure. I think uh, I, I feel that markets typically climb the wall of worry, uh, and there's always angst about having run up so fast. You know uh, that there could always be a pause. But if you take a slightly longer term view, uh, I feel that India still has um, uh, uh, quite a runway. I'm talking about a sort of three year horizon. So the valuations are maybe a bit extended, but not not crazy. So because you always have to look at the runway in front, and the runway is fantastic. So uh, I, if I look globally, actually, the two markets that I feel have the right dynamics for very strong returns, one would be after US, I would say, would be India and Indonesia. And even in terms of returns over the last couple of years, I think uh, India and US are right up there, right, in terms of uh, yes. uh, returns that they've given. Uh, and just to sort of press on that point, <clears throat> Uh, one minute longer, one refrain, uh, you know, one quite hears quite a bit nowadays is that there are no worry on the horizon. I mean, you know, uh, things are looking absolutely clear. In fact, I've even heard someone say the only thing to worry about that there is nothing to worry about. Now, that sort of thinking is basically inviting trouble. I just wanted your perspective. Well, you know, things always come from an expect, uh, unexpected areas. For example, uh, if something goes, uh, you know, uh, uh, Middle East could uh, flare up a little bit, oil prices could be could be higher for longer, and there could be a spike. I mean, that's those are the classic India worries people have. Oil prices, you know, although I think this less impactful than used to be for for various reasons. Uh, I think I think uh, the the biggest worry should be that a lot of mid caps have run a quarter bit. So could there be a pause? Entirely possible. Uh, and then markets. You know, we have these 10, 15 percent sort of shakeouts, uh, or, or some people call it the pause that refreshes. There's nothing wrong with those pauses, but uh, I think I think fundamentals are reasonably robust. So we're actually kind of in a glass half full, not glass half empty uh, mindset. Uh, we do feel that it is not a bad time to be to be kind of a risk on, despite the run up. I'm talking about globally. Um, what we've seen does it, 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 you also have to remember that. This is an election year in U.S. Election years typically means that there's more stimulation, whether fiscal policy or monetary policy. Um, inflation is reasonably well behaved. So from a global cross currents, uh, I think the whole inflation spike that we saw two years ago is kind of behind us. Uh, the, the Some of the forward leading indicators of inflation are actually pretty benign globally. Uh, and that has implication of monetary policy. And the elections generally means that politicians typically in, in U.S. also, you would see more stimulus. Uh, and 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 that tends to board well in it's more kind of this kind of more short term view 
not for a two, three year view. Okay, let's get specific now. Your big bets in India seem to be uh, the fact that there'll be a big build out of infrastructure, right? A lot of your uh, Adani group investments speak to that belief. Uh, these investments have done extremely well for you. Do you think that concerns regarding financing access for the group, for the Adani group, uh, I mean, you know, for global banks, bond markets, etc., that is largely behind us now? I think I think there seems to be a common misperception about this group. Mm. So if you look at closely, mm. around based on our numbers, between 5 to 7% of EBITDA is all that is needed for maintenance capex. The rest of the capex is growth capex, right? Which is much more easier to tone up or tone down based on the opportunity set. And if you look at in India today, uh, uh, the opportunity set is very, very wide. And if you, if you look at, for example, the renewal platform, now Adani Green has become the largest renewable green platform in the world already. Orsted, which was the, the, the big Danish company, is struggling. Um, so capital is not a problem in the vast majority of these. I mean, some obviously would be, would be more attracted to outside investors because of the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the mining ex exposure, et cetera. But uh, as, as the markets have shown, there's, there's more than enough appetite. So that was not a concern even, by the way, in March, April, when we first initiated, as we did the math, that capital is not a problem. Uh, when, when you're generating these kind of basically high teen uh, uh, underlying uh, IRRs, capital is always around. Oh, got it. You know, your last big investment was GMR uh, airports, at least the one which was uh, sort of publicly disclosed. Uh, could you share with us what has been the driving logic there? As you know, we, uh, we, we quite like the airports globally, uh, as long as the regulatory environment is, is sort of understandable and stable. Uh, in fact, one of the big be underlying bets for Adani Enterprises was that. And so GMR, after the cleanup of the structure, uh, it's, it's, it's now basically one of the largest airport operators in the world. Uh, the, as the regulatory reset comes through, which will happen over the, you know, in terms of what they get paid, there's a meaningful upside to EBITDA uh, as they go forward. And, and I think, I, think, I think this was because of the history of the group with, with the other infra assets, which now have been cleaned out. I think this was a little bit less recognized, we thought. Um, and I think, I think that also puts some sort of value on enterprises because, uh, uh, you know, Delhi Airport, if, if that is worth 10 billion plus, by the way, we feel that could be worth a, a multiple of that because you still have passenger growth running at mid-teens. Uh, I mean, you know, we've talked about airports of Thailand. We talked about some of the other airports, Sydney Airport, large sort of comparable airports. We feel there's not only uh, passenger growth, but also the ability to develop real estate, et cetera, around that, which historically was, was not a, a, as fully monetized as they're planning to do now. So we feel that there's meaningful upside in, in these assets. And as you know, these are very long tail assets. Uh, airlines come and go. Um, I mean, Indigo is a fantastic airline, but, uh, but, but airports, if they're reasonably well run, have a very, very long tail. So we feel that they should not only have um, a very stable growth, but also will trade at probably higher multiples on a long-term basis. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you mentioned uh, enterprises. Uh, you were talking about the uh, so the, uh, the the Mumbai airport, the Adani uh, airport, yes. within yes. house within. So just, I mean, could you just run us through that once again? I mean, what what's the valuation argument there, uh, and and how does it connect with your investment logic in GMR? So um, the. They, as you know, they own six airports, yeah. and Navi Mumbai would be probably be done end of this this year. Uh, it may you know end of this year or maybe early next year, but it'll become uh, the largest airport as such in the world with passenger volume growth running at mid teens. And there are other sort of abilities to monetize around that because I think if you look at Zurich Airport, Zurich Airport has monetized a lot of different things around Zurich. Uh, same thing for uh, Paris. Uh, same thing less for Frankfurt. Uh, so there's lo there's a lot of ability to monetize not only the passenger but also the revenue which can be generated in the ecosystem as such. If you put reasonable valuations that at that point, last year, as you know, when we bought the first tranche of Adani Enterprises, we thought the airport itself was worth more than the company. And the copper business is coming online maybe in a few months, uh, probably six months. That could be a billion dollar plus EBITDA alone. Uh, so I think, I, think, I think when you add these up, we thought we were getting basically everything else for free. Not to mention, I mean, Look, I mean, uh, 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 the the management, uh, uh, if you look at uh, Gautam Adani's track record, I mean, his track record is phenomenal in terms of creating value. So just the airport itself was worth more than enterprise, we thought. And now, if you look at the other things that have come up, so the funny thing about some of these names is that the earnings growth in the last 12 months, basically 12 months or so since our first investment, has been quite, quite, you know, quite, uh, quite fantastic. I mean, versus what we were expecting 
March, April. So the delivery has been quite remarkable. So I think I think that's an important part because the whole whole infrastructure space in general has delivered very strong returns.